Good evening and welcome to this week's edition of Close Up. And this week, by popular demand, we have a rematch. And we are pleased to welcome back into the Close Up ring Carolyn Glick, Senior Fellow at the Washington, D.C.-based Center for Security Policy and Senior Contributing Editor of the Jerusalem Post. This week I was present when Carolyn was awarded bar Ilan University's Ingeborg Rennert Center for Jewish Studies Annual Guardian of Zion Award. Congratulations, Carolyn. And in the other corner, Dr. Gershon Baskin, the founder and Israeli CEO of the Israel-Palestine Center for Research and Information, which is a jointly run Israeli-Palestinian think tank that works with hundreds of Israelis and Palestinians in government and in the private sector. We welcome you both. You. Okay, Carolyn, uh, of course, the subject of this week's close-up, naturally, uh, President Barack Obama's upcoming address to the Muslim world from Cairo tomorrow, as well as his recent tough statements on Israeli settlements and peace issues and let's start with this it probably hasn't escaped your notice that uh, Obama has not included Israel on his itinerary this time uh, on the Middle East which is unlike I think all of his predecessors as far as I know and also that he's making his speech on June 4th a very significant date of course when we talk about the pre June 4th borders in the peace process what do you make of all that I think that he's showing his contempt for Israel, and I think that it actually comes out even more clearly by the fact that not only is he not coming to visit us, he's going to visit Buchenwald death camp. So he's saying, all right, so from my perspective, it's not that uh, I'm going to go from the Arab world to the Jewish state. I'm going to go from the Arab world to a death camp. And oh, what is that? Uh, I'm not going far, and I'll tell you something else. Uh, it's not just uh, the Jews that he's showing contempt for, as far as I'm concerned, because from visiting uh, uh, the uh, uh, beaches of Normandy with, uh, with uh, French uh, President uh, Sarkozy on the 65th anniversary of the liberation, he's going to visit Dresden. So he's making some sort of a moral equivalence between um, the American war dead and a site of Allied bombing against Nazi Germany. And so I think this entire uh, trip is not just something that we have to take offense to. I think that basically uh, Americans and British and everybody who was involved with the Allied war effort should also be offended by what he's doing. Gesha, let's just back up a little bit to um, the upcoming speech of, of Obama. Now, already uh, Osama bin Laden is condemning the speech in advance, is making new threats uh, on the United States. Aren't we looking at a U.S. president that is terribly naive, that's walking into I, I would say uh, an extremist, uh, a, a murderous, he, he's going to the, the murderous policies of an Islamic world and he's going to try to talk nice to them. I, I don't know if he's naive or not. I don't know yet what he's going to say. I can't tell you what his policy is on the Middle East yet because it hasn't been developed. What I think is clear is that there's a change in orientation and I strongly disagree with, with Carolyn on that, on that change. I think we have for the first time in a long time a real friend of Israel in the White House, a friend of Israel who's going to help Israel make the decisions that it has been unable to make because of domestic politics and because, because of Because we Jewish don't want lobby. to. So he's, he's helping us by making us do something that we think no, is dangerous to our survival. What a friend. What a friend. We just had elections. The public here we doesn't We just have work. elections here. It's well, true. It but doesn't matter what to, the public says. I, I, I hope that I have an opportunity to speak, Carolyn. No, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, good. Um, I think that it's clear that Israel is now, with its present government, a state that's really alone in the world. The entire international community has decided that there is a two-state solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. It's only Israel that disagrees. Perhaps Israel, Iran, and Libya. What a club we're in. The whole world knows and agrees that Jerusalem will be the capitals of both of those states. The whole world knows that the Palestinian state will be created in 22% of the land between the river and the sea. The whole world also knows that Palestinian refugees who want to go home will go home to the state of Palestine and not to Israel. These are givens in the world, and we no longer have a president in the White House who's going to use a veto in order to support Israeli domestic politics. And you consider this a friendship? A true friendship, and I want to remind you that three out of four American Jews voted for Obama. And this means what? That we're supposed to change the way that we vote in the Israeli elections? No, no, Olympi not at all. Elections, not at all, uh, but these elections in Israel... never come here who aren't planning on... Uh, Gershon, are you inviting uh, American pressure on, the, on Israel's welcoming government? It. I'm welcoming tender, loving care instead of the bear hug that's held us in the wrong place for so many years. Oh, we need dear. the tough love 
of the Obama administration that's going to help Israel do what Israel needs to do in order to survive. But, yeah, so if Israel a... wants to remain the state of the Jewish people, we have to detach ourselves from occupying the Palestinian people. What's the difference between what you said and what the, what the editor of Haaretz, uh, the former editor of Haaretz, said, uh, David Landa to Condi Rice? He asked her to rape us. Isn't that basically no, what you're telling No, not at all. I'm not asking to be raped. I'm asking to be helped. Okay. okay. I, I want to ask you a question, Carolyn, coming from a different point of view. What is wrong with coming to the Muslim world, to one and a half billion Muslims in the world, as the leader of the free world, as the United States president, and trying to be conciliatory, trying to say, okay, guys, maybe there have been mistakes in the past, let's open a new chapter. Is that a bad thing? What, what mistakes did the United States make exactly? That they liberated 25 million Iraqis from Saddam Hussein? That they overthrew the Taliban regime in Afghanistan? That they overthrew, that, that they uh, secured Bosnia for the Muslims that were fighting against the Christian Serbs? What, what exactly is the great sin, the great crime that the United States has to uh, uh, adopt a conciliatory approach? Conciliation is not the same as apology. They don't have to necessarily apologize for their policies, well, but the fact yeah. is that America, as you very well know, is abhorred by the Arab world. And so are we. I, again, you know, uh, Gershon wants us to be uh, loved, apparently, by our enemies. It has nothing to do with love. Yeah, it well, has to it's do with our survival love. as a Jewish love, state. Yeah. That's right. love. We love we, Israel. We've had a bear hug it. from the United States right. that has prevented us from doing what's in our own best interest. But yes, sir, we also no, had a series of Israeli governments dating back certainly to Oslo in 1993 that was willing to make concession after concession to divide Jerusalem, to make a Palestinian no, 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 capital. We never, we never had a, a, an agreement with the Palestinians on a permanent status agreement here. We've had two sides who have systematically breached every agreement they've signed. This has not been the good guys against the bad guys. We've signed agreements and we've breached them also. Do you compare us to one. Hamas and to Fatah no, that are blowing up Hamas, uh, talk, buses? No, I'm not talking about blowing up Good buses. guys and bad guys? Who are the, who are the, who are both, we're bad and the Palestinians are bad? We offered them a final status arrangement in 2000 that and they responded by blowing up buses That's and right. killing and women and children. And they were very wrong in doing it and as a result there's no peace camp in Israel today and they paid a very heavy price. Oh, but you want the United mistakes. States to create create one with you and your friends maybe and go against with the, you too, the I'm not in a camp that says that Israel has to give up our capital city and our ability to defend mm. ourselves in the hope that maybe somebody's going to love us afterwards. You know that this capital city of ours is recognized by no one in the Who world. Cares? Not a single government in the world recognizes Jerusalem I'm, as a capital. I'm sorry. I want Jerusalem to be recognized by the entire world. Well, then I why don't you country. demand that they recognize it instead of demand, saying we're going to give it up in order for you to love us in a little ghetto of western Jerusalem. I also recognize that in order for Jerusalem right. to be ours we have to learn how to share it. Jerusalem is not ours exclusively. We totally share it. What are you talking about? Yes, you we have, share it. we have, we have, uh, we prevented have... Muslims from praying in the because they've been beating up on Jews every yes, time. What are you talking year old about? Forty-year-old Muslims who have nothing to do okay. with the conflict and people who go to work every day who have nothing to do with the conflict. Okay, ding. People. Round this over. You got to stop. Before <laughs> we continue our discussion of Obama and the Muslim world, let's focus on the burning issue on the table here in Israel, namely settlements. First, let's hear what President Obama himself has to say on the subject in an interview with BBC. One meeting with Prime Minister Netanyahu. Uh, I think that we have not seen uh, a, a set of uh, potential uh, gestures from other Arab states or uh, from the Palestinians that uh, might deal with some of uh, is, some Israeli concerns. Well, you've got a job of work, and I at least put it like that. I always have a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, no, <laughs> nobody thought this was going to be easy. If it was easy, it would have been done. Uh, but uh, but I do think that we uh, we're going to be able to uh, get uh, serious negotiations back on track, and we're going to uh, do everything we can because not only is it in the interest of the Palestinian people to have a state, it's in the interest of the Israeli people to stabilize the situation there, and it's in the interest of the United States that we've got two states living side by side in peace and security. Okay, Gershon, this is definitely a hands-on president. But let me ask you this, with so many urgent burning issues on his table, North Korea, Iran, Afghanistan, not to mention his domestic uh, issues, which are equally crucial. Why is it the business of the United States president that a kindergarten adds a room to an existing